Uh, welcome. Um, I'm not really too sure where to begin, but uh, I'll begin with a little bit of a story. Uh, some time ago, I was told to consider building a house out of straw. And I told this individual, you got to be crazy. I looked at them like they had two heads. And now down the road, a few years down the road, I'm here speaking to you. And now I'm teaching. And uh, the basis of my teaching has become from a formal background. I've completed my master's of education. And uh, what I found interesting about it is that it has led me to what's called the informal aspect of education. So for this evening, I'm going to start with uh, kind of looking at formal education to begin with. And traditionally, it's institutionally based, curriculum driven, and tends to only happen for about one third of our lives. Now that said, uh, it's always based in politics and so forth, and that was something that I did not want to get involved with because I was focused on changing the world uh, by building houses out of straw, oddly enough. Uh, so that led me to this concept of GPAs don't matter, and I would say that they do matter, otherwise I couldn't complete what I did, uh, but kids stay in school. It's absolutely crucial. <laughs> it's the only thing that I would tell you. I'm 41 and I just finished. So now that said, there is a, um, there's a global educational revolution happening right now, and it's embracing what's called the informal aspect of education from massive online open communication to this wonderful event in TEDx and all of the TED Talks themselves. Um, so it bridges the gap, which brings us to Einstein, that basically would state that uh, it's a miracle that curiosity survives formal education, which would lend individuals to think that informal education is crucial. Now, since the beginning of time, uh, we've always kind of relied upon storytelling. And this is just simply my little story, my little humble path that I'm upon. Um, and we've always thought about the basic necessities in life. And one of those basic necessities that we focused upon in our stories and how to better live a better life is based on shelter. Now, over time, we've always fought to try and create the best structure possible. From the most basic structures that you see here, uh, we've tried to provide some sort of roof over our heads to the massive and grand visions of the Dubai skyline, to prefabricated modular homes that are distributed across the country and built in factories. We're not necessarily looking at things sustainably, which has now led me to this wonderful thing I don't really know what to call it anymore. Um, this has been built by myself, obviously brought it into Moncton so that I can actually authentically show you what a straw bale wall looks like. Now, as my humble little path that I've been on, um, I did complete my Master's of Education, focused on many difficult aspects and pretty much fighting with my academic advisory committee to tell them, hey, I can change the world. Well, they told me I couldn't, and I took great offense to that, but it took me some time to realize that I can't, we can. And that's kind of why the premise that I'm here for is trying to get the word out there. Now, my story started <laughs> teaching and building these houses from a workshop. Um, many different buildings I've been on across North America, many different challenges that I've seen. There's always been something to overcome along that process. And these are just a number of the visuals that I'm trying to bring forth to individuals that they're just standard homes. They've just been insulated a little bit differently. Um, from my research and my education and what I've found, they're, they're the myths that are out there. Number one, as you guys saw, there's no way we could barely even get this thing out here, so the Big Bad Wolf will not have an effect on it. That's pretty simple, I can guarantee you that. Now with regards to pests, as you can see, because it's got a plaster coat on it, the pest can't get into the wall. It's nor a fruit, not a food source, so they won't eat it and they won't live in it. It's pretty simple. Rot, yes they can rot, and thanks to the 18 hours worth of rain that I had coming out here, there might be some issues, but it's not going to somebody's home, so I'll keep my fingers crossed on that one. With regards to fire, they are known to be told, or known to be said to be five times more fire resistant than traditional homes. You can take a blowtorch to this wall right now, not the straw, but the plaster, and it will not catch fire. Earthquakes, they're four times more fire resistant, or four times more resistant than traditional earthquakes, or traditional framed houses. One of the biggest things that I've found is that there's a need for organized and trained labor, which is something that is a big effect in life. We all have to kind of collaborate to train, to put these ideas out there and to move forward. Now, this is all based on one concept of best practices. This wall right here will basically show you a number of different techniques and opportunities that you can to build these structures. I'm not an expert in all of the fields. I know what I've been taught and I advocate for that practice. Now that said, everything that I've been saying here this evening, everything I've done from educational perspective has been based on hope. And somebody very dear to my heart um, is Paul Frere. And he has written a book called Pedagogy of Hope. And I'll leave you this quote and a little bit of a call to action. Without the minimum of hope, we cannot begin the struggle. 
if at a minimum today I've inspired you to go learn something more about education, about straw bale construction, please do so. And keep your eyes and ears open for what's called the Hope Collaborative here happening in Moncton. Thank you for your time.